So this uh, this webinar will will talk about Monte Carlo simulation, and it really provides uh, all the information such that you will be able to run your own simulations using uh, using Excel. And uh, the beauty of, of Monte Carlo simulations is that they can be interconnected, and an entire system can be simulated that way. Our tools that provide uh, uh, that, that provide Monte Carlo uh, simulations, but it's always I personally find that it's always nice to know how they work and what it is that that's involved, uh, so that uh, uh, one knows what's going on uh, behind the engine. Now, uh, uh, mathematicians will probably a little bit uh, at Monte Carlo simulations because they don't really consider them real math. Uh, yet, those simulations constitute one of probably one of the most powerful techniques to to solve complex problems. Uh, Monte Carlo uh, simulation, as shown here, it's a, it's a method to iteratively evaluating a a deterministic model using a random numbers as input, and it's particularly useful when the the model is nonlinear, and it involves a very large number of uh, uncertain parameters. So, in the relatively recent Monte Carlo simulations were devised in the uh, early 50s, and they were not they could not be performed until the the computers uh, became available. Now, in the 1950s, there weren't that many of them. And they were very expensive, but now with the PCs, uh, one can perform Monte Carlo, very complex Monte Carlo simulations at, uh, at relatively high speed. And the, their name comes from uh, two scientists, uh, Stanis uh, Marson Ulam, and his uncle, ha his uncle happened to be a gambler and Nicholas Metropolis. And they named the technique uh, Monte Carlo in honor of the uncle of uh, Stanislav Marson, because he was a gambler. And of course, Monte Carlo is the, uh, probably the world's most famous casino. Uh, and and the, 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 the technique, the Monte Carlo simulation is also associated with the, the search of a technique on how to break the bank. So when you're when you go to a casino and you play the roulette, for example, well, the roulette is never quite perfect. I mean, there are bearings that are not quite round, and whether uh, uh, the, the casino likes it or not, I mean, there are numbers that are favored over others. So someone who's standing next to the roulette and plotting those numbers, recording them, over a period of time may be able to see that there is a pattern and then uh, one could, uh, could bet, and eventually, because of the imperfections of the bearings and of the roulette, of the mechanisms, he would be able to make money. So what they do in the casinos now is that they the, uh, the roulette and, uh, every, every day to make sure that nobody uh, is observing and recording those numbers and plotting the pattern and being able to essentially break the bank. At uh, a time, they were considered secret. So it was done as part of the uh, defense initiatives, but because of its powerful potential to be used in fields other than defense, then it was declassified, and indeed now it's used almost everywhere it's used particularly in the insurance field, in the banking field. Uh, essentially, this is how the financial analysts determine whether uh, a bond is a good investment or a bad investment. This is how the uh, insurance companies determine how much they should charge to certain people living in certain areas to make sure that they're not going to lose money. Uh, I'll explain the concept here of Monte Carlo simulation in a very simple slide, and then later on we'll see a more complex application. 
And with this, uh, this slide, you'll see why mathematicians are kind of reluctant to refer them as, as mathematics. So here you have a, a, a very irregular shape, and the goal is to calculate the area of that shape. Now, it's certainly not obvious at first sight on how you do that. So that by applying Monte Carlo simulations, how this can be done. The, the first step is that we're going to enclose that shape in another one for which the area is easily calculated. For example, in this case, we have a, a rectangle, and we know that the area of a rectangle is the width times the height. We're going to generate a very large number of randomly distributed points that all lie within the rectangle. Points the better. We're just going to count the number of points that fall within the regular shape the number, uh, uh, that number by the total number of points generated and multiply the ratio by the area of the rectangle. And there you go. You've got your, the area of your, of your regular shape. So as you see, it's a fairly simple concept. Now, how this concept can be applied to solve more complex problems, problems that are really not obvious and and possibly where you want to do what if you want to change parameters and you want to see what the effect of those changes are. Assume that the, uh, the, um, the, the, uh, the, the complex application is, is like the following. Okay, so you've got an organization that maintains software systems and you receive a large number of work orders uh, on, a, on a regular basis. And those work orders, the reception of work orders is randomly distributed. Now, depending on the number of resources that you have at your disposal, some will be late, some will be over budget, some will be on time. And the idea is to identify what can we do to make sure that the delay, the delivery delay is not exceedingly long. Now, there may be other factors that come into play, such as the severity of the work orders, for example, severity of the problem to solve, where they come from, okay? So human factors, and we all know that uh, some work orders, when they come from someone in particular, they'll be put at the bottom of the file, or else they may be, they may be uh, uh, processed on a priority basis because we happen to like the person or the organization who sent them. But uh, for now, we'll just consider the number of resources available not to complicate the, the, the whole issue. There are also some other simplifications that were made in the examples that I will uh, present because we, I really want to explain the concept as opposed to explaining the details. The details can always be added later. Uh, let's assume that you're, you're concerned about delivering behind schedule because each time a work order is more than five days late, you have to use uh, external resources, contracted resources, to complete it. And those, con those, are, those resources are not cheap. They come in, let's say, at a price of $2,000 a day. And as I mentioned earlier, it would be nice to be able to do what is, to determine what is the impact of changing the way those work orders are processed and the kind of resources that are uh, assigned to them. The uh, industrial engineering.